Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to select my June TBR, kind of. So today's TBR is definitely going to look a little bit different. First, I know this is going to disappoint a lot of people, but I'm not going to be playing my TBR game, and here is why. I've mentioned this previously, but I am participating in the Amazing Readathon, which is a competitive team-based readathon created by Brie over at Four Paws in a Book. It's a readathon based around the Amazing Race. It's definitely a complicated and intricate readathon. I participated in it last year and I had a great time, and this year Brie so kindly asked me to be a moderator for the Discord. So I'm helping to moderate all of the chaos that's going on in there, and I'm also on Team Spooky, Team Stab ghosts where we read thrillers, horrors, mysteries, cozy mysteries, suspense, all of that good stuff. And I'm so excited to participate. But the one thing about this readathon that makes it different from most others is that you do not know the main prompts ahead of time. They are going to be dropped every few days in the month of June. So there really is no way to fully plan for what you're going to be reading for the main prompts of the readathon. There are, however, sightseeing prompts or basically bonus prompts that you can satisfy to earn additional points for your team. So what I want to do is I kind of want to go over the pile of possibilities that I've created to satisfy some of those sightseeing prompts. And I will also be pulling the standard challenge pulls from this mug with the caveat that if I'm not able to satisfy the challenge prompts or read the books that I pull from this mug, that I will not be taking a punishment. That means I can put them back in the mug if I want to, or more than likely, I will just go ahead and automatically roll them over into July. It just kind of depends on what I can do because there are going to be 10 main prompts for the Amazing Readathon. And I typically read now about 15 books a month. So if I'm taking into account those 10 main prompts, as well as maybe five, Five sightseeing prompts, there's not going to be a lot of flexibility. So if I cannot fit whatever I pull from here into the readathon, whatever I pull from here is going to have to be moved to July or is going to have to be put back into the mug. And so because there's definitely a lot of uncertainty and a lot of chaos surrounding the readathon, I didn't want to add to that by playing my TBR game, which is just going to add more prompts that I might not be able to fit into the month of June. And if you watched last month's TBR, you will know that the board game was not exactly all that kind to me. So I'm taking a little bit of a break from the TBR game just for the month of June. If the readathon wasn't happening, I would absolutely be playing it again. But for the sake of my sanity, we are not going to be playing it. Now, of course, before we get into the pile of possibilities, as well as the challenge polls, I need to go ahead and recap how I did with the May TBR, which was so very unkind to me. So starting with the challenge polls, the very first poll was to read the story life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This was one of your recommendations, and I did read that. Next, I pulled another one of your recommendations, and it was called The Good Part by Sophie Cousins, which I did read. Next, I drew the prompt to read an academic thriller. I was originally going to satisfy this with Bunny by Mona Awad, but I DNF'd that book, so instead I chose The Plot by Jean Hoff Horowitz, which I did read. The next challenge prompt was to read A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. I have not finished that book. I'm nowhere near finishing that book. I've only just now reached about the 200 page mark, I think. A lot has gotten in my way of reading the past couple of weeks because it has been absolutely crazy at work, and even when it's not crazy, my mind is going a million miles an hour, and I can't really sit down and concentrate on it, so I'm slowly making my way through it, so I may be about 25% of the way through. So I am in the middle of it, and we're just going to go ahead and keep plugging away at it and hopefully I can finish it sooner rather than later, but I am in the middle of it. And then challenge poll number five was to read The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley, which I started but I decided not to continue reading and there was nothing egregiously wrong with the story, but after getting a couple of chapters in, I could just kind of tell that it wasn't going to be anything substantial. It was just going to be like light and fluffy and cute and that's not really what I was going for. I knew that this was probably going to be a mediocre forgettable read and I didn't really want to waste my time on it, so I ultimately decided not to continue with that book. All right, moving on into the gameplay prompts, the first first prompt I needed to satisfy was to read the lowest rated book on my TBR. This was a punishment prompt due to the fact that I drew a joker. And for this, I had to read I Did It For You by Amy Engel, which I did read. Next was another punishment prompt. And I had to read a book by an author that I've disliked in the past. And so for this, I read Alice Feeney's newest release, which was called Good Bad Girl. And it was fine. It was definitely not nearly as bad as Daisy Darker, but it wasn't anything remarkable. In fact, I think I've completely forgotten almost everything about that story. So it was like basically a three star read. And I'm really not going to be reading any Alice Feeney in the future. Next was yet another punishment prompt and that was to read a book I said I would never read and again I was going to use Bunny by Mona Ewa to satisfy this and I DNF'd it after 30%. I did give it a solid honest and fair shot and I just couldn't do it anymore. I was absolutely hating my life while listening to this book. So any of these punishment prompts I'm going to do my best to fully satisfy by completing the book but if I don't if I DNF it that's fine. I did what I could with it and we're moving on. Then I got the prompt to read a new to me author and for that I actually used the plot by Jean Hoff Corlitz because I had never read anything by that author before. And then the very final prompt was yet another punishment 
assignment prompt, and that was to read one of your least favorite books so far of 2024. I ended up selecting Dark Place by Gillian Flynn out of all of the recommendations that you gave me because that was one that was actually on my physical TBR, and that was another DNF. I just do not think that me and Gillian Flynn get along. I was not nearly as blown away by Gone Girl as literally everybody else was. I read that book close to when it came out, and I was just kind of like, mm, okay, this is fine. Nothing mind blowing about it. I was definitely not blown away by the twist that happened in the story or anything. And then a couple years ago, I read Sharp Objects, and I didn't really like that story at all. And so Dark Place was going to kind of be like the final nail in her coffin, so to speak. And I got a part of the way through. I got a decent amount of the way through, I would say. And I just really didn't care. I didn't like anything about the story. I definitely didn't like the characters. And it wasn't really making me want to read the story. And so because of that, I went ahead and just stopped reading it. I DNF'd it. And I will be unhauling pretty much all of my Gillian Flynn books, except for Gone Girl. I think I will go ahead and keep that one. But Dark Places is going to go and it's no longer on my TBR. So I would say that May was both successful and unsuccessful in the fact that I definitely had some books on my TBR that I really didn't care about reading. I didn't want to read. And of course, I definitely had a few DNFs as well, but all of the prompts got satisfied to the best of my ability, meaning there's really nothing else rolling into June with the exception of A Court of Silver Flames, which is fine because I wasn't planning on physically reading anything for the Amazing Readathon in June. I was just going to be listening to books, so that can remain my physical read. But for the most part, that's going to be completely separate from the Amazing Readathon. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into challenge pulls, starting with challenge pull number one. I cannot tell if this is focused, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm trying. Nominated for the Booker Prize. Okay, I think I actually do have a book scheduled to satisfy this prompt. Let me double check. Well, this could not have been more perfect because the book that I had scheduled to satisfy this prompt is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkin Wraithwaite. Now, I chose this to satisfy the Booker Prize prompt because for another reading challenge, I have to read a book from an African author and I believe Oyinkin Wraithwaite lives in Nigeria. So this is actually going to satisfy two prompts, but not only that, but it is definitely going to work for the Amazing Readathon because it falls under the thriller genre. And I can absolutely fit this into the Amazing Readathon, even if it doesn't satisfy one of the main travel prompts, because it's got a five word title. And that is one of the upper level sightseeing prompts. So I for sure can absolutely fit this in for June. Now, I really don't know anything about this. This is one that was never on my radar before. It says when Karidi's dinner is interrupted one night by a distress call from her sister, Ayula, she knows what's expected of her. Bleach, rubber gloves, nerves of steel, and a strong stomach. This will be the third boyfriend Ayula's dispatched in quote, self-defense. And the third mess that her lethal little sibling has left Kareda to clear away. She should probably go to the police for the good of the menfolk of Nigeria, but she loves her sister. And as they say, family always comes first. Until, that is, Ayula starts dating the doctor where Kareda works as a nurse. Kareda's long been in love with him and isn't prepared to see him wind up with a knife in the back. But to save one would mean sacrificing the other. So that just sounds like it's going to be a wild and wacky time. Like I said, this I don't think is anything that I would have picked up normally had it not been for reading challenges that I needed to satisfy. But luckily this is going to work out well for me in the month of June. Well, I could not have asked for a better selection we are going to see if this next draw is as kind to me. Another challenge prompt. This time it's to read a book with a pronoun in the title. And this is currently a challenge prompt that I do not have a book already scheduled to satisfy. So this is another one that I'm going to kind of have to play it by ear and do a little bit of research for. If I know what I would like to read for this, I will pop it up on the screen, but I might just wait to see what comes up for the Amazing Readathon to see what I'm going to read for this one. All right, draw number three. The Wishing Game. Okay, so this is one of your recommendations. This is actually a story that I've seen going around quite a lot. I've heard a lot of really amazing things about this one. This could potentially be something that is right up my alley because I feel like it's going to have some of maybe those like magical realism vibes that I've really, really been digging lately. I will definitely hold on to this one. I don't know if this is one that I'm going to get to for the Amazing Readathon because it doesn't fit with the team spooky genre. Now, I don't necessarily have to read within my genre, but it does give me bonus points. So if this does happen to fit another prompt for the Amazing Readathon, I might go ahead and just read it. Either way, I will definitely be reading this if not in June in July. All right draw number four. The Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley. Okay, so this is actually one that I own on my physical TBR. Let me grab it really quick. I am actually really intrigued by Colleen Oakley as an author because the premise of a lot of her books really intrigue me. I have read two of her past novels and I've really, really enjoyed them. There's always a really unique concept attached to them. And for the most part, I think they are very well executed. They are a very pleasurable reading experience. This says, Piper Parrish's life on Frick Island, a tiny remote town smack in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay is nearly perfect. Well, aside from one pesky detail, her beloved husband, Tom, is dead. When Tom's 
crab boat capsized and his body wasn't recovered, Piper, rocked to the core, did a most peculiar thing. She carried on as if her husband were not only still alive, but living right there beside her. She cooked him breakfast, walked him to the docks each morning, and met him for their standard weekly dinner at the One-Eyed Crab. And what were the townspeople to do but go along with their beloved widow, Piper? Anders Caldwell's career is not going well. An ambitious young journalist, he hoped to be a national award-winning podcaster by now rather than writing fluff pieces for a small town newspaper. But when he gets an assignment to travel to remote Frick Island and cover their boring annual cakewalk fundraiser, he stumbles upon a much more fascinating tale. An entire town pretending to see and interact with a man who does not actually exist. Convinced it's the career-making story he needs for his podcast, Anders returns to the island to begin covert research and spend more time with the enigmatic Piper. But he has no idea that out of all the lives he's about to have been, it's his that will change the most. So I think that there's going to be a cute romance coming on in here after she's coming off of such heavy grief. And I just think that this sounds beautiful and lovely. And I'm really interested to see how Colleen Oakley executes this one. This is another one that doesn't fit well with the team spooky genre, but if I can fit it in in June, I will. If not, I will 100% be reading this in July. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one and we're going to see if I can get to it. So, so far, a lot of these challenge prompts have really worked out well. I can absolutely fit a lot of these in with June, especially if I'm okay with not getting the genre bonus. So let's see what this fifth and final pull gets me. A book by an author from Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Y'all, this is perfect. Hold on one second. I was already planning on reading Exiles by Jane Harper for the sightseeing prompt of reading a book with a one word title. This is going to be the third. I don't know if it's going to be the final book in the Aaron Falk series, but it's the last one that I need to read to be caught up in the series. And then I think I'm going to stop with the series. I don't think I'm going to be continuing with it just because I've never been really impressed with the series and I haven't been impressed with any of Jane Harper's other novels either. But because I have it and because I kind of want to just like finish out the series or what I can finish of the series, I wanted to go ahead and read this. So when I saw that it would satisfy a sightseeing prompt, I put it onto my pile of possibilities. But now this will also satisfy this challenge prompt. So this is 100% getting read in the month of June. Y'all, I think the TBR gods are trying to make up for how very poorly they treated me in the month of May because almost every single one of these challenge polls worked out very, very well and I could absolutely fit them in to the month of June. So I am beyond ecstatic. And actually that's really changed my pile of possibilities because some of the challenge polls are going to take care of these anyway. But I'm still going to run through really quickly some of the books that I have on my radar to satisfy some of these sightseeing prompts. So first I have X by Sue Grafton. I've talked about this series multiple times. This is the Alphabet Murder series by Sue Grafton. It is a series that was started in the 80s. It's one that I've been reading for many, many years at this point, And I would really love to get to this in the month of June just to kind of continue in this series. This satisfies another upper level sightseeing prompt of reading a book with only text on the cover. So no pictures or anything like that. I think it would be really great to go ahead and be able to satisfy this one. And I'm very much looking forward to getting to it. I also wanna to try to get to Falling by TJ Newman because because this is going to satisfy the sightseeing prompt of reading a book with a plane, train, or car on the cover. I've heard a lot of really amazing things about PJ Newman and the really high octane, fast paced thrillers that she writes that are typically set on a plane of some type. This says, you just boarded a flight to New York. There are 143 other passengers aboard. What you don't know is that 30 minutes before the flight, your pilot's family was kidnapped. For his family to live, everyone on your plane must die. The only way the family will survive is if the pilot follows his orders and crashes the plane. Enjoy the flight. So this is really short, really quick, and it would be perfect for a sightseeing prompt because a really good strategy strategy for this readathon is to save your shorter books for the sightseeing prompts because page count is not involved in those point totals. So for example, I think this is either a 400 or 500 level prompt. And so if I just read this really short, quick read, which I could possibly do in just like a day, I would get automatically 400 or 500 points with minimal effort. And so that is a really solid strategy. So this is 100% one that I really, really think that I'm going to be able to get to in the month of June. Since I would be using Falling by TJ Newman to satisfy a book with a plane on the cover, I wanted to go ahead and find another book by an author that uses initials and luckily I have the final book by S.A. Cosby that I need to read, My Darkest Prayer. I absolutely love S.A. Cosby. His prose is very beautiful for the type of stories that he writes. This, I want to say, is his debut. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the only book by him that I have not read and I'm very excited to get to it. It says, I handle the bodies. Whether it's working at his cousin's funeral home or tossing around the local riffraff at his favorite bar, Nathan Waymaker is a man who knows how to handle the bodies. A former Marine and Sheriff's deputy, Nathan has built a reputation in his small southern town as a man who can help when no one else can. When a beloved local minister is found dead, his parishioners ask Nathan to investigate. Things get complicated and Nathan must use all of his varied skills to navigate the murky waters of small town corruption, even as dark secrets of his own threaten to come to the surface. I'm absolutely down for this. This is another pretty short, quick read that I would love to be able to get to to satisfy a sightseeing prompt. I also have The Return of Ellie Black by Amico Jean. This is actually a brand new release. It was featured in the Book of the Month box for May and I really want to get to it because you all know that I'm trying to read these as they come in. This could be a couple of things. This could satisfy the sightseeing prompt of reading a book 
with five words in the title. This also could satisfy the prompt of reading a book with all five vowels on it. I think I might go ahead and use this to satisfy a book with a person's name in the title, but we're gonna see. This is definitely a high priority because I'm trying to read these books as they come in from book of the month. So I definitely think I wanna get to this one no matter what. I wanna fit it in somewhere for the readathon. Another one I pulled to satisfy the prompt with a person's name in the title is Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. This is one that has been sitting on my TBR for quite a while. I've heard pretty good things about this one and I really wanna get to it. So this is another one that I would love to satisfy something in the month of June, even if it's not a sightseeing prompt. So this is definitely on there as a possibility for one of the main travel leg prompts. It says Florence Darrow is a low level publishing employee who believes that she's destined to be a famous writer. When she stumbles into a job as the assistant to the brilliant enigmatic novelist known as Maud Dixon, whose true identity is a secret, it appears that the universe is finally providing Florence's big chance. The arrangement seems perfect. Maud Dixon, whose real name Florence discovers is Helen Wilcox, can be prickly, but she is full of pointed wisdom, not only on how to write, but also on how to live. Florence quickly falls under Helen's spell and eagerly accompanies her to Morocco, where Helen's new novel is set. Amid the colorful streets of Marrakesh and the windswept beaches of the coast, Florence's life at last feels interesting enough to inspire a novel of her own. But when Florence wakes up in the hospital after a terrible car accident with no memory of the previous night and no sign of Helen, she's tempted to take a shortcut. Instead of hiding in Helen's shadow, why not upgrade into Helen's life? Not to mention her best-selling pseudonym. Taut, twisty, and viciously entertaining, Who is Maud Dixon is a stylish psychological thriller about how far into the darkness you're willing to go to claim the life you've always wanted. Okay, so this is kind of reminding me a little bit of the plot in that you have somebody who is going to steal the work of another person. So it sounds like the assistant is going to steal the identity of Maud Dixon, who is a pseudonym for an author, but nobody knows who the author is in real life. And I'm here for it. So we're going to see if I can get to this one. All right, everybody, that is it. I better stop before this TBR pile gets any bigger. So those are all of the books that I plan to try to get to in the month of June, particularly as it relates to the Amazing Readathon. Please comment down below and let me know if you have joined the Amazing Readathon. And if so, what your team is. Again, I will try to remember to leave Bree's announcement video in the description down below so that you could go ahead and check it out. It is very, very important that you watch that video and get all of the details before joining the Discord so that you have a lot of the information that you need and you are not coming in blind. And of course, if you have read any of the books that are on my TBR, I would love to know your thoughts or some of the books on your pile of possibilities for the Amazing Readathon. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me an airplane emoji in honor of Falling by TJ Newman. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.